we will continue with our series of presentations explaining the left ventricular pressure volume loop and discuss the contractility of the heart in details. Let's start by stating that the end systolic pressure volume relationship represents the maximal pressure developed by the LV at any given volume at end of systole and is a measure of cardiac contractility. The slope of ESPVR, also referred to as EES, is an index of end systolic elastance, indicated by change in pressure divided by change in volume, and provides information on contractile function of the heart. Cardiac contractility is the innate ability of the heart muscle to contract, independent of preload. Therefore, a change in EEs can be viewed as a change in contractility. An increase in the EE slope relative to the control state indicates a positive inotropic response, or an increase in contractility, whereas a decrease in slope reflects a negative inotropic response, or a decrease in contractility. The degree at which the slope of the ESPVR has changed can give you information about the overall health of the heart and be used to characterize certain cardiac disease states. With increased contractility, the heart's ability to generate force during contraction is enhanced. This has specific effects on the end systolic pressure, ESP, end systolic volume, ESV, end diastolic volume, EDV, and stroke volume, SV. The left ventricle can generate higher pressures at the end of systole for a given end systolic volume. This is reflected in a steeper slope of the ESPVR line. Essentially, the heart can pump more effectively against a given afterload, leading to higher pressures. Increased contractility means the heart can eject a greater volume of blood during systole, which reduces the end systolic volume. As a result, the volume of blood left in the ventricle after contraction is lower. Now, because the heart empties more efficiently, there might be a slight reduction in end diastolic volume as the heart cycles through more complete ejections and fills. However, EDV is primarily influenced by venous return and ventricular compliance rather than contractility, so it may remain relatively constant or decrease slightly. Finally, the stroke volume, SV, which is the amount of blood ejected by the left ventricle during each contraction, and is calculated as the difference between end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. Therefore, with increased contractility, because ESV decreases while EDV remains the same or slightly decreases, stroke volume increases. So, in summary, increased contractility leads to decreased end systolic volume, constant or slightly decreased end diastolic volume, and increased stroke volume. On the other hand, when contractility is decreased, the heart's ability to generate force during contraction is impaired. This results in specific effects on the end systolic pressure, end systolic volume, end diastolic volume, and stroke volume. With decreased contractility, the left ventricle generates lower pressures at the end of systole for a given end systolic volume. This is reflected in a flatter slope of the ESPVR line. The heart is less effective at pumping against a given afterload, leading to lower pressures. Decreased contractility means the heart cannot eject as much blood during systole, which increases the end systolic volume. More blood is left in the ventricle after contraction. At the same time, and because the heart empties less efficiently, there might be an increase in end diastolic volume as the heart cycles through less complete ejections and fills. However, EDV is also influenced by venous return and ventricular compliance. Finally, because end systolic volume increases, while end diastolic volume remains the same or slightly decreases, stroke volume decreases. So, in summary, decreased contractility leads to increased end systolic volume, constant or slightly increased end diastolic volume, and decreased stroke volume. Thank you for watching. Please leave your comments in the comment section.